Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Supernova Super Fang's Path. So, I've got a sweet little kitty next to me right now. We just having all the fun in the world. Just like getting pet by daddy. Yeah, she's a sweet boy. I have several cats. This one, I have several names for this one. One of them is Chunkito. <laughs> or Chunky Boy. He's not even fat. He's really lean. Oh, you want to get up? Okay, little boy. You can go over there if you want. Okay. Alright, guys. So, anyway, let's jump right back into it. And let's see exactly where we're going to go in Super Fang's path. Alright. <clears throat> Here we go. Alarm Shen, you are up. And let's go. And I'm recording this right before I go see Nope in theaters. So, should be interesting. Anyway, guys. <clears throat> I can drive you to your college sometime in the afternoon. How does that sound? Yeah, that'd be great. After I make sure it's safe. Your kids take care of that. You. He points to me. Come with me. Where? You'll see. It's just a small matter before you leave. What is this about? A precaution. Nisus gives him a long, tense look. Play nice. Yeah, yeah. Hm. All right, Nick, you'll be fine. I get even more nervous at that, but I nod back at the fox regardless before following them after the Baron. To my surprise, the Baron leads me straight to the med room. He says something to Gil while we're talk while we're walking, speaking in a low enough voice that I can't hear the individual words. I don't know if that's on purpose, but it puts me on edge. As we enter, my eyes my eye is drawn to the small table where I spot a rather oversized syringe. Uh. The Baron picks it up and turns to me. What the hell is that? Tracking chip. What? Absolutely not! Listen, rookie, you'll thank me when you inevitably get your ass in trouble and need our help. So quit whining and pull up your sleeve. Uh, fine. I really don't want to say no because I don't want to piss the Baron off because he'll probably uh, end up doing it anyway. And it'll be a lot, a lot more painful, so... Is this necessary? I value my peace of mind very highly, so yes. I am touched that you care so much about my well-being. I roll up my sleeve and grip my teeth. Keep dreaming, Rookie. I'm concerned about the bracelet. A fucking course he is. The syringe plunges into my flesh, but it doesn't hurt too badly. Now stay put until Superfang picks you up. Before I can retort, the Baron is already out the door. I'm so glad he's not going to be mentoring me. Hopefully I'll be dealing with him as little as possible. I rub my arm. It's a little sore, but nothing compared to what my chest felt like a couple days ago. What am I supposed to do for now? I guess I should go back to Superfang's room. Vince will know, Vince will know to find me there. I wish one of the four would give me a proper tour of the place, since technically I'm part of the team now. Maybe my new mentor will do, some, will do so when we begin training. I wonder if everyone is left by now. What would they be all up to? What would they be up to all day anyway? Patrolling the city, maybe? Regardless, I'll learn soon enough what the day-to-day -day life of a superhero is like. I stare again at the reddish band. I've been doing that a lot. The reality of it all is sinking in. I'm a superhero now. A freaking superhero. Damn. I can't deny the excitement, but there is fear there, too. My mind flashes back to the image of the snarling wolf smashing his fist with ungodly force into Templar's armor. Over and over again. The badger inside the armor, bleeding. Broken. Dying. My breathing speeds up. The pounding of my heart is deafening. All traces of the thrill I was feeling are gone. Nick, I detect that you are in distress. No, I'm fine. It's fine. I force myself to breathe. Slow, even breaths. Gradually, my heartbeat returns to normal. It won't happen to me. The Sentinels know they have a deadly enemy out there now. They won't let harm come to me in that way. No way. Still trembling a little, I manage to push the thoughts aside. I'm safe. I'm safe. I'll be alright. I have people to guide me. Everything is going to be fine. That's what we all tell ourselves in the cold of night. Before Vince comes to pick me up the next day, I have a brief chat with Unbound, going over what I should tell people when I'm out, when I'm out there again. She seems satisfied with my ability to cover my tracks, so the talk doesn't last long. By the time we're supposed to leave, I'm desperate to be out of the sun again. Naturally, my phone informs me that it's going to be overcast. Can't complain about the company, at least. I'm amused to see that Vince's car is only slightly less shitty than mine. I guess superheroes don't pay them well. I 
just as a precaution, I'm going to save this part right here and come right back to you guys. Hey, what do you know? All is well. Alrighty, let's continue, guys. Vince apologizes about the sorry state of the ride before I can get a single word out. He looks embarrassed about it, too, so I assure him it's fine. We're in the large cavern. I, we're in the large cavern I've glimpsed a couple times during my stay here, which I know now serves as the garage. Anyway, Nisa says we're good to go. Did he? I don't know. Go and check my dorm room or something? No idea. I mean, he could sneak inside if he wanted to without much trouble. Oh, right. You have a roommate. Maybe not then. All right. We get in the car and start riding down a narrow tunnel. Vince has pushed his seat almost all the way back. I examine the tunnel as we drive. The rocky walls and ceiling in the cavern suggest we're underground somewhere. I'm proven right as the path slopes upwards and I spot an entrance sliding open for us. We emerge onto a dirt road as I glance in the, and as I glance in the side mirror, I see the entrance close again, leaving a perfectly innocent patch of ground. We're up in Salsford Park! Since Vince, seen, Vince seems to have noticed me looking around. Don't worry, this part of the private property, and Gil monitors the entrances. How is this all built? Gil has a lot of bodies. Like, robotic ones? Yep. I ponder that while, while Vince drives us onto a proper road. I hope we get to see what Gil actually looks like in robot form. That'd be pretty cool. Guess that explains he takes care of the facility. <clears throat> it would be silly to expect the Sentinels to do it, and hiring staff would be out of the question. Nova glitters in the distance. Salzford is one of the largest parks in the state. I've hiked here a couple times. The lush forests are a perfect complement to the sandy beaches to the west. It's not too far from the city either, so the Sentinels could be back there for in a short time. Well, the flying ones at least. Do you usually drive all the way up here? Nope! Nisus is the only one who does. <clears throat> How do you get around then? Vince grins. I'll show you during our first training session. We're quiet for a bit. I gaze out the window, appreciating the view of the city. Hey, Vince, I guess I haven't asked. What have you been up to since high school? Besides the Super Fang stuff, I mean. The tiger holds the steering wheel with one paw, scratching his cheek with the other. Not much, really. Did pre-med at Nova U. Now I'm taking a year off to shadow some doctors to prep me for med school. The surprise I'm feeling must be showing because Vince's whiskers twitch and he gives me a nervous glance. What? Nothing, just unexpected, I guess. You were so into theater, I figured you'd go into the arts. Oh. <laughs> no, not really. My parents didn't want me to, and I wasn't about to disappoint them. Huh. My own parents weren't thrilled when I decided to major in English, so I get where he's coming from. Did you do any drama stuff in college? Nah, was too busy. I feel a pang of disappointment. It's cool he's studying to become a doctor, but the tiger was so passionate about theater. I don't think I've seen any other high schooler get into it as much as Vince would whenever he, we were putting on a show. He almost always got the lead parts, too. Honestly, with his looks, he could have become a famous actor. What about you? Still in it? Not quite. I began writing instead, and I was awful at acting anyway. Don't say that, dude. You had a great voice. You're a godsend for musicals. Not inaccurate. I can indeed sing, but I'm nowhere near as good as Vince is making it sound. I beam at him anyway. You know... I'm glad you decided to do this. Meaning... Join us. Become a superhero. For a bit, I, was, I wasn't sure you would. I tilt my head, thinking... Well, I won't lie. Unbound didn't make it sound easy. Good thing you were there to deliver a pit the pitch then, huh? Heh! <laughs> glad I had such a receptive audience. We chat a little more about this and that. Turns out Vince does some volunteer work as well. I can't comprehend how he manages to pull it off, since he is also f since he is also freaking super fang. You silly cat, what are you doing? I'm gonna kick you. I'm gonna kick your little tail. When I ask, he reacts with an awkward smile. We're soon in the city, and it doesn't take long from there to get to Grifton. Vince drops me off near, the, my, near my dorm. Oh, I forgot to ask! You want me to drive you to the funeral tomorrow? No, I'm good. I should be able to get my, to get my car back by then. Hey, sweet boy, what you doing? <laughs> I hope the audience can hear you. What you doing? You sweet little chunkito boy. <laughs> oh god, you're so sweet. You're such a pretty boy. You sure? <laughs> Neat. Uh, Frank lives nearby. I was gonna pick him up. Might as well all go together. You know what? Sure. Text me, alright? Sounds good. Nisus didn't mention he lived near Grifton. I wonder if I've ever seen him in, the, in his civilian guise, unaware of his true identity. Doubt it. Nova is a huge city with way too many people. Events waves, waves before driving off. 
The quad is fairly crowded. It's mid-afternoon, after all. Several students are lounging on the grass, reading or chatting. I head into my dorm room, my dorm building, messaging Lucas that I'm back. He doesn't respond while I take the elevator ride to our floor. Ooh, excuse me. I've somehow managed to, ret to retain the keys to our suite. When I open the door, I see a blur of movement. I have barely any time to react before I'm half-hugged, half-hackled by my wolf roommate. Hey, hey, ow! Dude, you're gonna crush my ribs! Lucas laughs at that, the vibration pass passing from his chest into mine. Sorry! Just glad you're, you know, good! I feel a little awkward. Lucas tends to be quiet, uh, quite open about his feelings, but he's never been this openly affectionate. I am indeed good! <laughs> I grin as he slaps me on the back. Careful, asshole, I'm still sore! It's good to be back. If only for a moment, I could forget about the craziness behind and ahead of me. I sit down on my chair and turn to face Lucas. But, yeah, for real, though. I was losing my mind before you texted me. I'm so touched. Lucas chucks a pillow at me. I catch it, laughing, but I don't throw it back. Okay, okay, I'm just happy we both made it out of there. Heh, <laughs> yeah. That was insane. Oh, you don't know the half of it. Not that I'll be explaining what actually happened, even if Unbound hadn't instructed me to keep quiet. I know how dumb that would be. What the hell was up with that hospital, anyway? Not letting us visit and shit. I shrug and try to divert the topic. Us? Well, yeah, your parents, too. I spoke a bunch with your mom. How did you even get her number? Jess has it, dummy, from last summer. Oh, that's right, I hadn't forgotten about that. I had forgotten about that. I texted her to your back, by the way. She should be over soon. I perk up at that. Jessica Wilder became a uh, became a part of our little power trio late into freshman year, and we've been almost inseparable since. I bet she's probably a superhero. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> hey, you're looking good, all things considered. Yeah, thank you. I consider myself quite a handsome raccoon. Hmm, maybe handsome for a raccoon. Hey! Lucas isn't quite as swift to catch the throne pill when it smacks him in the muzzle. Before he can retaliate, there's a knock on the door, so I give him a smirk while he gets up to open it. Nick! Ah, yes! She is a superhero. She's invisible. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to see when they got her sprite done. Jess unceremoniously pushes Lucas out of the way and charges right at me. The chair almost tips over, threatening to send both of us to the floor. She throws herself onto my lap and gives me another rib-crushing hug. That fuck! Are you two trying to kill me? Oh, shut up! I'm just happy to see you! She squeezes once before jumping nimbly off me. The lynx pauses to look me over with a critical eye. Her face then splits into a grin again. You pushed... Hey, you pushed me! Mm-hmm. Well, you were in my way. I was opening the door for you. Mm-hmm. Lucas continues to pout, rubbing his elbow in, and I burst out laughing. It's so good to see them again. How are you, Nick? I'm fine. Nothing broken, as you can see. She eyes me up and down, then nods, satisfied. Looks like it. Good. You kept us pretty worried for a bit there. Jess plants herself on the couch. So then, what have you two dummies learned from this experience? Heh. <laughs> Don't help Lucas with projects he should have completed a month ago. Hook up at the sky every time you're out, just in case there's supervillains flying at you. Stay away from shitty unfinished construction projects? <laughs> He'll stay with Nick somewhere just because he likes the view. Wow, dick. Very good, very good. Seems we have internalized some valuable life lessons after all. Jess puts on a mock voice, like she's lecturing a class of third graders. Indeed, ma'am. I'll be honest, at first when Lucas told me what happened, I thought it was some dumb prank. Yeah, it took me a while to convince her. Trust me, it was very real. And as batshit crazy as it sounds, Lucas turns to me, suddenly serious. So what happened after the, stair after the stairs collapsed? You never told me. I, it's all kind of a blur, as I told you. Templar and that other one were fighting. Stuff was flying around. They kept smashing through walls and shit, so I had to keep running from one place to the next to keep myself hidden. I guess at some point I just got smacked in the head and it knocked me out. I woke up at the hospital. Lucas is wearing that same paint expression I saw in the condo that day. Fuck, dude! I should have found a way up there! Don't be stupid! You were right to get out while you could! I nod in agreement. Lucas is beating himself up over complete nonsense. There was nothing he could have done. He would have just gotten himself killed. The wolf lets out a heavy sigh. Come on, you know you couldn't help me and you couldn't help me there in any way. Yeah, uh, I guess. Just cuts in to change the topic. You ready for the midterms? Yes, I got so much studying done. Alright, don't get snippy. Did you at least ask for the extensions? 
Yeah, emailed all my professors while I was at the hospital. I got an extra week for my papers, and they rescheduled my Tuesday exam for Friday. Wow, unfair! The one extension they gave me was for my independent project, since, you know, my footage is lost. Well, and you know, Nisus asked me to not spread the word about what happened at the construction. Oh, I had forgotten about that. I glanced over at Jess. Noticing this, Lucas starts to shake his head. Well, I had to tell Jess, dude. It's not like she'll tell anyone. Duh. I'm a little uneasy about this. Nisus is nice, but I doubt he liked Lucas blabbing, even to another close friend of mine. Speaking of... An all-too-familiar mischievous smirk is tugging at Lucas's muzzle. You're telling me you were unconscious when Superfang carried you off in his strong, muscular arms? Jess snickers. Shit, Nick, that must be heartbreaking. My bemused expression seems to entertain them all the more. Ha ha, look at the pro comedians over here. Oh, come on, you know you would have loved that had you been awake. I flip the bird at both of them, even though a part of me knows they're not entirely wrong. Vince is rather handsome. That doesn't mean, however, that I want him to, him to bridle carry me anywhere. Even if he does have those strong, muscular arms Lucas mentioned. Fuck, where the hell am I going with this? Focus, damn it! Yeah, what about you? Enjoyed getting a close look at Nisus? <laughs> you know what? Not half bad. Shorter than I expected, but what little, little I could see under that cowl was cute. What did you even see? The tip of his nose? I think I spotted his whiskers peeking out, too. Alright, boys, you can fawn over your savior some other time. What I want to find out is, do we know what happened to Templar? I blink. Templar. Templar's dead. And also, I'm Templar. I I'm sure he's fine. I he seemed to be winning the fight when I was not when I was knocked out. I try to sound casual, but I'm not convinced I pull it off. Well, that other dude flew off a couple minutes before Superfang got there. For all we know, he might have, you know, finished the job and left. I feel my breathing grow faster as I shake my head. I think Tipar just drove him off before his teammates arrived. Hope so. Hope so. Besides, the supervillain would have wouldn't have left any of you alive, right? Right. I hate lying to them like this. Shit, this is harder than I thought it'd be. Fortunately, the conversation shifts to something else again, and I just let Lucas and Jess chatter while I think. After half an hour or so, Jess excuses herself, telling us she needs to study and reminding me to do the same. I smile and wave at the links as she leaves. Oh, mm, excuse me, guys. You still owe me dinner, by the way. The wolf lets out a rumbling laugh. <laughs> After all that time is spent reassuring your parents. You know what? <sighs> Fair. We'll, we'll call it even. The rest of the day is uneventful. I catch up on some work now that I have access to my laptop. It's a little strange to be back in my dorm room worrying about papers and exams when just this morning I was in a secret base of an actual superhero team. The school stuff still seems rather distant right now, and my thoughts inevitably turn to Templar's funeral. The Baron wasn't wrong. I don't know anything about the Badger who wore his bracelet before me. I think about the, nothing about his life, who he was, what he was like. It, he entrusted me with his powers, his armor. This is just an opportunity for me to honor him in my own small way. I should have asked Vince about, about him while we were driving instead of reminiscing about high school stuff. I suppose I can ask him tomorrow when he picks me up. Eventually, I wander over to the showers. When I return, Lucas gives me a curious glance. What's that? He's pointing at the bracelet. Shit, I keep forgetting it's there. I wish I had it. I wish I had. I wish it had even a tiny bit of weight to it. It's uh, a gift from a friend. The wolf frowns. <sighs> Sorry, guys. I woke up not too long ago. Yo, oh, when did you get it? At the hospital. I realized my answer was dumb before Lucas even asked the next question. Huh? I thought it was no visitors allowed. Uh, er, didn't visit me. He he works there. Someone I knew in high school. I can tell by the way the wolf's ears are moving that, around that I'm doing a piss-poor job with this story. Good friend? Uh, k kinda? He looks at the bracelet, then back at me. Is there any point to this? Oh, sorry, I was just curious. It's just a cheap bracelet, Lucas. Anyway, good night. Oh, okay, good night. With a nod, I head into my room to get dressed. I'm feeling pretty irritated, although I'm not sure if it's directed at him or at myself. A little bit of both, maybe. By the time I'm back in the common room, Lucas has his headphones on, so I just do some light reading. Before I go to bed, I inform him that I'll be out tomorrow. I don't lie about my purpose, although I don't mention whose funeral it really is. Nope. Oh. Lucas leaves early for an exam while I spend the morning making myself presentable. My head fur is being stubborn, so I spend a while trying to get it into proper shape. 
I put on my suit and tie and then just wait for a lift. Wait for Vince. What you do when you little sweet boy? Being silly, I'm gonna let you out in a moment, don't worry. But half an hour later, I get the message that he's almost here, so I head out. Morning, Nick! Vince is dressed for the occasion as well, his oversized biceps and shoulders bulging through the navy fabric of his suit as he grips the steering wheel. Good morning. I hesitate, unsure if I should ride shotgun or leave the seat open for Nisus. In the end, I decide to just get in the front seat. Surely being Vince's, Vince's mentee affords, some, him, affords me some privileges. H how are you feeling? Good, I mean, well, you know. Yeah, I think I do. Get off of there. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. The cat's getting restless. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next part, until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!